Victoria students. This is the Shah from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Right. We are learning about the some basic electrical engineering. So in our last session we have discussed about the Norton theorem. In our today's session, uh, let's discuss a uh, new theorem. Uh, that theorem we define as the superposition theorem. So basic soft networks we will again quickly discuss. Hadley theorem we have already discussed. Norton theorem we have already discussed. So in our today's session we are going to discuss about the superposition theorem. Uh, two more topics, uh, both are related with the circuit analysis, uh, one is called model analysis and another one is called the mesh analysis, that part we are also going to learn. Now, uh, you can see here uh, the basics of the network, so what is a circuit, again uh, the uh, a path, a path uh, through which current flows or intent to flow is defined as the circuit. So, this is the example of circuit, so this is a complete circuit having the two loops, right, uh, now here what is a node or junction where uh, three or more than three branches are connected, or two or uh, more, more elements are connected uh, together, is defined as a uh, node. So this is an example of node. You can also consider as a branch where uh, a part or a part of circuit or network which lies between two uh, nodes or junction. Uh, for any wire, the uh, elements are connected. Let's say one single component or element is connected, or more elements are connected in a series. So this is defined as a so you can see all these uh, three branches or maybe more branches uh, you can incorporate in a circuit, right? Same way, uh, what is the loop? So ultimately close path in a network or in a circuit is defined as a uh, loop. So you can also consider as a mesh. So ultimately everything depends on the current where current must follow the close path that is defined as a circuit or loop, right? Now, let us quickly discuss about the our next theorem which is called a superposition theorem. Right, so here we already discussed Hamilton uh, theorem and Norton theorem. Where, why we are learning this uh, theorem? Uh, this theorems are called circuit theorems because there are various ways. So this is one of the ways. This is one of the method to solve or to analyze the complete circuit. So once you design the circuit, then in circuit there are so many number of registers, voltage sources, current sources are available, and you have a voltage drop across a specific register or Current which is passing through that particular resistance, you can be able to find uh, by any method. Either you can go for a Hamilton method, or a Norton method, or next is a superposition method. Right? So it is used to solve the electric circuit which have more than one energy source. Right? So here in this circuit, we have a more number of voltage sources, either current sources. Right? So uh, it is applicable to only a linear circuits. So this is obvious things where uh, only a resistive network you can apply the superposition theorem. Same way, therefore, it is not applicable to circuit which have non-linear components or uh, non-linear devices like diodes, transistors, etc. Right. Same way. Uh, if you define here, this is the circuit uh, of the superposition theorem where there are two uh, voltage sources are available, three resistors are connected in series and parallel combi uh, uh, combination. So. Statement is that in a linear bilateral network containing more than one energy source, the resultant current or EMF flowing in this element can be found by considering each source separately while all other sources are replaced by their internal resistance and then algebraic, algebraically ending currents EMF are due to the individual. Uh, sources. So, what does it mean? In this particular network, there are two sources, two voltage sources are there. And let's say I want to find the current which is passing through uh, resistance R2 or voltage drop across R2. So, what I have to do, I have to consider the effects of both E1 and E2, right? So, once you consider both the effect E1 and E2, right, uh, on a specific resistance R2, right, simultane simultaneously you cannot take two voltage sources. Together, right? So, what you have to do here, you have to take first effect of E1, then you have to calculate the effect of E1, then you have to take the effect of E2, and then you have to calculate the effect of E2. Then, and finally, you have to algebraically add or subtract this uh, two effects that is passing through uh, register R2 or voltage drop across R2, right? So, superposition that means at a time only one source you have to consider. So, at a time only one source is at the supreme position. Right, and that time it is acting in a, uh, in a circuit. That's why this is considered as a superposition. Right, let's discuss one by one. So, 
You can see here the example where there are two uh, sources are uh, sources are available. One is the body source, another one is the current source, and two resistances are uh, 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 are available are connected here. So where your job is to find the uh, voltage uh, drop across nine ohm resistance or current passing through the nine, nine ohm resistance, right? So uh, how you can find the effect of this two uh, this this two separate sources like one is voltage source, another one is the current source. So basic method is to take one at a time, right? So let's uh, first consider key one source. So what you have to do, you have to make your uh, current source zero. Current source zero, that is current source, you have to make it open. So once you make uh, any current source open, that means value is zero. And that is if you have to make the voltage source short, that means the voltage is zero, right? So here, my first job is to find uh, from the nine ohm resistance, I have to find the current. Right, and my first job is to figure it out in which direction current would be flowing for the or from the effect of nine volt voltage source and the two ampere current source. So my first job is to find the direction of current which is passing through nine ohm uh, resistance from these two effects. So T volt T plus and minus. So current would be flowing uh, uh, due to the effect of three volt voltage source from top to bottom. In 9 ohm resistance, same with the same 2 ampere current, that effect also from top to bottom. So, algebraically, at the end, if once you find the separate effect of 3 volt voltage source and 2 ampere current source, so at the end, you will add these two currents and you will find the answer. So, uh, we will start with the step number one where 2 ampere current I make it open, so it is a zero. So, your circuit is only 3 volt. Uh, which is uh, applicable to the series connection of 6 ohm resistance and 9 ohm resistance. So from that you can be able to find your current. It's very simple uh, using the Ohm's law. So you can find your, your I9 dash current, which is dash is, uh, stands for only single effect, and that effect is equal to 3 volt source, right? So now uh, I9 dash that is equal to 3 divided by 6 plus 9. So that particular current is from A to B, from top to bottom, that is going to appear. Same way, now consider uh, 2 ampere current source where voltage source must be short or it is 0. So uh, now we are finding the effect of current which is passing through 9 ohm resistance because of the 2 ampere current source. So you can easily find why because here that is a current divider rule. So ultimately I 9 double dash that is the effect of current which is passing through 9 ohm resistance from or uh, of, of the 2 ampere main current source. So, I 9 double dash is equal to 2 multiplied by 6 divided by 6 plus 9. That is simple of current divider rule. So, it is a 0.8 ampere. So, here for both the effect, see current directions are always from A to B in the same direction. So, to consider these two effects, we have to add this, uh, uh, this current. So, total I 9 which is passing through the 9 ohm resistance is I 9 dash plus I 9 double dash and that is equal to 0.2 plus 0.8 is equal to 1 ampere. Right. So, this is one example. Now we also discuss about the next example. Now this is the uh, example where two water sources are available. Right. So one water source you have to take at a time. So if I am going to take 50 water water source, then you have to make it 25 water source short or zero. So once you make it short here, if you are looking from 50 volt source, then two resistances are in parallel, which is a 3 ohm and 5 ohm, and in series with the 10 ohm. So my first job is to find the total resistance of the network. Right, so total resistance of the, that particular network is 11.9 uh, ohm. Then the current uh, which is supplied from the 50 volt source, that effect I have to find. So, uh, before you start step number one, you have to think, you have to figure it out uh, in which direction the current is passing through 3 ohm resistance due to effect of 50 volt voltage source as well as the effect of 25 volt source. 25 volt voltage source, right. So, here, as you know, the current. Uh, uh, Current effect or current uh, supplied by the 50 volt source that I define as I1 dash and that is equal to 50 divided by 11 point the total resistance of the circuit which is 4.2 ampere. So from this uh, I can be able to find the I2 dash uh, using the current divider rule. So I2 dash I2 uh, dash is equal to 4.2 uh, multiplied by 5 divided by 5 plus 3. This is the current divider. So 2.63 ampere uh, that is the effect. 
of current that is the current which is passing through three ohm resistance due to the effect of 50 volt fuse then that current direction is from again A to B is from top to bottom right same way the current which is passing through 5 ohm resistance is 1.58 uh, so here we are looking for current uh, current which is flowing through all independent resistances so uh, uh, you can see all the effect here now uh, as we discuss about step number 2 where now I am taking the 25 volt source and so making the 50 volt source short so same formula but I am now looking from this side so you can see here from this side you are looking for from 25 volt uh, voltage source you are looking for and you are making 50 volt short so same here 10 ohm and 3 ohm both are in a parallel in series with the 5 ohm so same uh, same formula as I am using so the total resistance for the second case is 7.31 ohm uh, the current would be 3.42 so ultimately I do uh, double as you can find uh, from the current divider rule which is 3.42 multiplied by 10 divided by 10 plus 3 so 2.63 same way I want dash uh, that is passing through the 10 ohm uh, resistance that is uh, 0.78 right so from, from this two separate uh, example you can find all this uh, current I1, I2 and I3 this is the current effects uh, that is the current which is passing through all these three resistances 10 ohm, 3 ohm and 5 ohm from, uh, uh, considering both the effects of uh, 50 volt voltage source and a 25 volt voltage source so you can see this all the currents like I1 current which is I1 dash minus I1 double dash is nothing but two opposite direction of currents uh, for a 10 ohm resistance so it's a 4.2 minus 0.78 so 3.42 same way the current which is passing through the 3 ohm where two currents are in the same direction for both the effects so it's a 5.26 and same the current is passing through 5 ohm resistance I2 that is equal to I3 double dash minus I3 dash again two currents are in the opposite direction which is passing through 5 ohm from this two effects so that current is 1.84 ampere right now one more example now this the, this example is the same example that we have already discussed during the superposition Norton and same example now we can also solve using the superposition theorem so for cavity Norton we have taken the same example so for superposition we are also taking the same example so here two voltage sources 10, 10 volt 20 volt 10 ohm resistance, 10 ohm resistance and 40 ohm resistance we have, we have, uh, uh, we have solved this particular examples uh, in Cavalier as well as Norton now this uh, here in superposition we have to take one voltage source at a time so now I am taking 10 volt voltage source to so make it 20 volt voltage source so, so here so uh, 40 ohm and 10 ohm are in parallel with the 10 ohm uh, in series so you can find here that particular uh, step You can see here the total resistance uh, across the 10 volt, which is at 18 ohm, the current uh, of the circuit is uh, 0.5 ampere, and which particular current which is passing through the 40 ohm resistance, which is a 0.4 ampere. So, all this you can find using the current divider rule. Same way, now I am taking here 20 volt source and make it 10 volt source short, right? So, here I am looking for here from this, this, direct, uh, from this direction. So, you can see here, uh, 10 ohm uh, resistance and 40 ohm resistance both are in parallel in the series of 10 ohm resistance. So, you can easily find the total resistance for this particular uh, step number 2 is 18 ohm. Again, the current which is passing through the 5 ohm resistance which is 0.25 ampere, that is the total current. And from this, you can be able to uh, find I3, uh, I3 dash current using the current divider rule. So, here ultimately, uh, current are two current directions uh, are passing from terminal A to B, it's from top to bottom. So at the end, you can add these two currents like I3 is equal to I3 dash plus I3 double dash. So 1.28 on case number one, uh, where you have taken a 10 volt source, then I3 double dash, which is a current uh, because of the effect of uh, 20 volt source. So both in algebraic sum, you can total find uh, you can find a total current which is 1.68 ampere. So, the current which is passing through 40 ohm is 1.68 ampere. Now, this is the case where uh, you already found in the Norton and theorem. Uh, Norton and Cavity theorem. You can just check it out. Thank you very much, uh, dear students. If you find any query, please write in a uh, comment box.